So um, let's talk some numbers for a second. So let's say, of course, you know, let's just use your area because you know your area, like, you know, these, the single family houses that you have right now that make up part of the 1700 units. Give us an example of one of the properties that you've got that if you were just renting it out traditionally, uh, you know, give us a description of what this house looks like. Um, and this can be just like one of your typical single family houses, um, square footage, number of beds and baths. What would it typically rent out just on the traditional rental market? And in contrast to that now, with it being fractionalized with, you know, multiple renters inside the same property, how much does that property, um, you know, cash flow under this model compared to the traditional model? It's a great question. Actually, uh, it shows you to some extent how quickly we're growing. That we're we're now over twenty five hundred units. So just in the time, maybe it's pretty hard to book time on your show that uh, we've we've had a lot of time to do it. But uh, but yeah, we're yeah up over twenty five hundred units now. But yeah, the way to think about it is you know take uh, one of our original insights is that for the you know typically rental properties tend to be relatively small because they're you know, cheaper to maintain, you know, a little less space, there's less demand or they're at, for the larger sized houses. Um, but a lot of these houses exist, you know, that are say four bedrooms, call it more than 1600 square feet, just to think of the housing stock. So oftentimes yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's houses that yeah. have underutilized space. So maybe it's a basement or a garage or a big dining room or a big living room where as a, as an investor, you don't get paid for that space. You don't get paid for the dining room, you know, and for us, you, you get paid for the bedroom. So how do you kind of capture and monetize that, that underutilized space? So again, starting with a house that's maybe three or four bedrooms and call it 1600 square feet plus, uh, you know, maybe it's in a transitioning neighborhood or, you know, close to public transit, maybe rents for 1700 bucks a month traditionally, you know, or even say $2,000 a month. Okay, great. You know, as a traditional rental, you're renting it out. You think you're doing okay, paying some maintenance, paying your property manager 10%. You know, hey, that's a good investment. You know, you're maybe clearing, uh, you know, 1500 bucks before before your note. You know, hey, that's that's pretty good. Um, our view is you take that four bedroom house and maybe you take the living room or the dining room or a basement and turn it to six or seven bedrooms, right? So you're adding, you're capturing and monetizing that underutilized space. Well, you're running it out by the room. Your rooms are your revenue generating units. And so, you know, our average prices, you're talking, you know, between 600 and 700 bucks a month, kind of all in with utilities. So again, much less than the cost of an apartment and more flexible. So great value for, for the renter. But again, you know, and I am a, you know, I'm a former Marine. So making me do math uh, in public is, is a little bit harsh, but uh, you know, 600 bucks a month, seven bedrooms, that's over $4,000 a month. Now, Look, you're paying utilities on the property. You know, you're you're paying pad split. You know, we've got our fee. That's a that's a cut of revenue. I got those kids. You know, we got to pay. You know, they get, they eat. You know, I got to we got to pay for them somehow. Um, again, you're paying your property manager. You know, you have expenses. But again, going from two thousand dollars in gross rents over four thousand, that's that's the magic, right? So even net of expenses, you're typically clearing about double the net operating income, and that's that's kind of why investors work with us. Now, many do because they say, hey, I, they have a conviction the way that we do that people who work in our community should be able to live in our communities. Okay, that's wonderful, but the numbers have to work. And that's really one of our original insights was, you know, we have this affordable housing crisis um, in our country, but it's a supply problem in that if you can make the yields work, you know, if you can make it as profitable or more profitable than market rate housing, well, then you don't have a problem because you're tapping into the capital and the intellect and the energy and creativity of the investors, private investors in the market. So if you can make that happen, the supply fixes itself. Got you.